and from the Gospel of Luke this morning, starting at chapter 12, verse 22. And he said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what shall eat, about your body, what you shall put on. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens, they neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barns, and yet God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? And which of you, by being anxious, can add a cubit to the span of his life? And if you are not able to do a small thing as this, then why are you anxious about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow, neither toil nor spin, yet I tell you, even Solomon, all of his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. But if God, who so clothes the grass, which is alive in the field today, and tomorrow is thrown in the oven, how much more will he clothe you? O little one of faith, and do not seek what you are to eat or what you are to drink, not be anxious of mine, for all the nations of the world seek these things. And your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these shall be yours as well. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell your possessions and give alms. Provide yourselves with purses that do not grow old, with a treasure in heaven that does not fail, where no thief approaches and no moth destroys, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thank you, God. Thirteen years ago, um, I, I preached this sermon, and I, I thought uh, since uh, the date is coming up, I'd, I'd do it again. Twenty-three years have passed quickly in the life of the country, and for those of us who are getting older, you know, 23 years passes really fast. I can hardly believe it. 23 years ago this week, uh, Sarah Sees was my secretary at that time. She's now passed on to glory. We were, um, I was listening, uh, she was listening to the radio down in the church office. And uh, she called me on the intercom and says, hey, something big has just happened. And she says, you need to turn your TV on. I had a little TV in my office that I got up there. And I thought, oh, having a TV in the minister's office is really cool. I remember one time I was in uh, Kansas City. And it was a big Methodist church. And I was going to seminary in Kansas City for a little while. And uh, the minister had a TV in his office. And I thought, wow, this guy has got it made, you know. He's got a TV. He even had cable. But it was during the Olympic where the, you know, the great hockey game went with the, you know, all that sort of thing, the the golden day of hockey. And the hockey game was on at 11 o'clock in the morning, central time. They were playing, I forget where it was. And the deacons were leaving the sanctuary. Well, they were all holed up in the minister's office watching the game on TV. And they had one guy posted out so they knew when to come out and take up the offering and stuff like that. And the minister acted like he was pretty upset. He, he talked about it the next Sunday. He says, those deacons were back in my office watching on my color TV. He said they could at least came out and told us the score. Well, I had a, I had a TV. It was an old one. But she said something big's happening. So she said, turn on TV. And, and I turned it on. And there was the World Trade Center. And the announcer said that a, a plane had accidentally run into the World Trade Center. And it was a big deal. So I called uh, all the staff. We had a janitor. And we had uh, Sarah and uh, myself. And I think somebody else was there that day. And they all came to my office. We were watching on television. And all of a sudden, we saw a huge airliner make a big curve around that part of New York City and fly right into the second tower. There was this huge explosion, and we knew that it it wasn't an accident. It was an act of terror. And, of course, all the rest that happened uh, in due course. 
you know, the other crashes and that sort of thing. And so that uh, next week I went up to see my dad. He was still living at that time. And uh, dad said, yeah, he said, I knew something was amiss. He said, the, I was uh, brush hogging up on the hill, up on the highest point of the farm. And he says, I'm, I'm brush hogging away with the tractor. And he says, the ground started to rumble. He said, so I, he said, I, I pushed the clutch in and disengaged the brush hog and shut the motor off. And he said, I looked out and on the horizon, there were two black little dots coming towards me. He said, man, they got big really fast. Here they were two uh, jets out of Pittsburgh, fighter jets. And he said, they passed within 200 feet of me. He said, I could see the pilots and their helmets. And he said, they went by me. He said, it was sonic boom, the whole bit. And he said, they were gone just that fast. And uh, he said, I didn't really know. He said, I knew something was happening, but I didn't know what. So he said, I I shut everything down, went down to the house, and turned the TV on. That's when he saw what was happening. We all have our stories to tell. Where we were, what we were doing. And yes, I, I do remember where I was the day I heard Elvis died. You know? It was a day that changed all of our, our lives, for sure. It was, for, for many of us, the first time we ever heard of Al-Qaeda... Afghanistan, things like that, and a person named Osama bin Laden, you know? And uh, it would launch our country into a 10-year-long war. And in my office that day, Sarah, Melody, and I watched the Twin Towers burn and then would collapse, and we realized that, you know, heat steel up enough, it'll, it'll bend, and, and that sort of thing. We heard about the plane that hit the Pentagon, and and the fourth plane that crashed in Shanksville, Pennsylvania. And we went outside, and all air travel had stopped, and there was, and you know, a lot of, where we live down in St. Clair's, we have a lot of air traffic out of Pittsburgh. There was not an airplane to be seen anywhere. On that day, 2,977 people became victims. They died. And, uh, our General Assembly put out many materials, uh, you know, to honor them, especially on the 10th anniversary. And it said that the Americans, as well as 236 citizens from 90 countries, and 19 hijackers died. 246 people on four planes, uh, 40 aboard Flight 93, went down to Shanksville, PA. 87 aboard American Flight 11, which was the one, first one to hit the World Trade Center. 60 aboard United Flight 175, which was the second plane. And 59 aboard American Flight 77 that hit the Pentagon. 2,606 people in New York City in the Twin Towers on the ground. 125 at the Pentagon, 55 of which were military. 411 emergency workers who responded to the scene, including 342 firefighters, 10 paramedics, 23 New York City police officers, and 37 Port Authority officers. They all perished. You know, I was kind of disappointed in in some of our religious leaders at that time. They said that what happened on that day was God's judgment upon America for America's sin. And even the famous uh, David Wilkerson, uh, uh, famous of the cross and switchblade, uh, they later retracted those things. And uh, I was glad about that. But I think about God's providence, being that, you know, how much God loves us and, and cares for us and I, I never knew how much God loved us until I got really sick. I'm a little better these days. Well, kind of. Anyway, uh, but how much he loves us, especially in the tough times of life, and about God's care and his protection. And they tell me, and the General Assembly put this out, that the casualty rates could have been extraordinarily higher, 10 times, 30 times higher. 
There was the father who was late to work that day and wasn't there because his daughter had the first day of kindergarten. There were many that day who didn't make it to work because of the traffic in New York City. Don't always curse the traffic, you know. There were thousands who made it out of the buildings with the help and the guidance of others, police, firemen, first responders. Estimates run as high as 50,000 that could have been killed, but the hand of God protected its people. Now, I chose the New Testament reading of Luke 12, 22 this morning on this 23rd anniversary. Well, it's next week, actually. Luke 12 tells of Jesus' teaching, Do not worry and watchfulness. There is much that a person can worry about in this life. I was watching YouTube uh, this past week, and I I don't know the movie, but uh, the guy was Jewish, and uh, he was being prosecuted for something that he didn't do, but everybody thought he did. And uh, his defense counsel said, Man, you're... You're really calm for a guy who's facing, you know, maybe the death penalty and all this kind of sin. He said, don't you ever worry. He said, would it help? And he, he said that several times during the move, which is really funny. You know, every time they wanted to worry, he said, would it help? And they're like, no. <laughs> you know, and, and it was after 9-11, it was so easy to be scared to live in fear, to live suspecting others of doing us harm. Jesus' teaching is about all those things. Jesus said, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you eat, and the body, and what you will wear. And Jesus talks about the ravens of the air and how God cares and and he loves for them. Jesus talks about the lilies and how God cares for such beautiful things. Jesus teaches us not to worry about the things of life or even to be frightened. But that we should not spend our time and our lives worrying. We do worry, though, and something we do. He says it doesn't help, it doesn't work. Probably Jesus' greatest teaching to us today is this. Your Father knows that you need all these things. He said, but seek first his kingdom. And all these things he will give to you as well. I guess he would say, put first things first. (laughs) Jesus goes on to say that this one thing that he always says in times of distress, uncertainty, fear. He said, don't be afraid. Your father's been pleased to give you the kingdom. To give you the kingdom. You already have inherited the kingdom. You're all more than conquerors. You're going to heaven. It's going to be great. The great battle in the end has already been won for you. You're going to make it. You're going to be there. Jesus wanted our true treasure to be in heaven, the kingdom of God. To be concerned about the kingdom. To work for the kingdom. And he says, place your treasure there in the kingdom. Last part of Jesus' teaching is about watchfulness. He said, be dressed, be ready for service, and keep your lights burning. And then Jesus tells a story about waiting for the bridegroom at the banquet. In Jesus' day, the groom was the one who kicked off things, and he could come whenever he wanted, and, uh, you know, sometimes late at night. And Jesus gives the illustration of the master who goes on a long journey and then returns. Jesus talks about being ready for the man who might break into the house. Jesus sends this way. You should, must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour and you do not expect it. You know, Jesus teaches the people of his day, do not worry. But put first things first, the kingdom. and Work for the king. Give to the poor. Be dressed and ready for service. Keep your lights burning. Be watchful for the master to come. On that Tuesday morning, way back 
in 2001, September 11th, churches in the area opened their doors to help. One church reported that uh, on that first day, all they had was peanut butter jelly and 3,000 slices of bread. It was enough. They were still feeding people months later. People showed up to sew leather booties for the search dogs. You know, all kinds of things like that. Be read. Let us follow Jesus. May we seek the kingdom. May we work for the kingdom. Be dressed and ready for service. May our lamps never go out. We serve the Lord and his people with joy now forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we give you thanks for this day. And ask your blessing upon us as we serve you in all that we do. Be with us, O oh Lord. May we be yours and may our lamps never go out, but burn brightly always. Give thanks. Amen. <laughs>